So, hi, I'm good, and I'm here to show you my movement speed build. This is a build suggested by a person on Reddit a while back, and it took me a little bit of time to get all the right pieces together to really uh, flesh it out. Um, when I got the guy, he, this guy used to be about level 59, I think, and uh, you know, I respect him for movement speed, but I realized there were a couple nodes I could take. I had to level them up, which is exceedingly difficult with around 700 hit points, but if you have a plus 3 to bow gems bow, uh, it really makes, oh yeah, with them power, it, uh, it really makes Poison Arrow pretty much, you know, easy mode for doing that. So I leveled up, got them all the points, and let's see, let's see how this character really works. Um, the tree is just grabbing every movement speed node across the entire table, so movement speed, uh, haste, I think that's movement speed, or, I don't know, that's vocabulary, I don't know, movement speed, uh, movement speed nodes, uh, mana, uh, can't really maintain Arctic Arm without a little bit of mana regeneration, so, and the guys who covers that, uh, you know, Aspen Beeble, more movement speed, movement speed, uh, frenzy charges, all the frenzy charges, because they're movement speed, uh, movement speed, uh, celerity for movement speed, iron reflexes, it's not really important to take iron reflexes, that's not really part of the build, however, unwavering stance, Prevents stun. And if you get stunned, that's kind of like anti-movement speed. So you gotta get an wavering stance if you really want to do the build correctly. So you never stop moving. Uh, as for up here. Uh, berserking for faster attacks. So I don't stop as much. Um, then frenzy charge. And uh, leather and steel. Because avoiding penalties for movement speed is just like having more movement speed. Um, as for over here, got movement speed there, and then a long trek away from everywhere that makes sense to grab armor mastery for 2% movement speed. And finally, all the way up to inner force for the last strongest buff to movement speed available. Inner force buffs uh, arctic armor with quality. Uh, yeah, arctic armor is up here. So, yeah, quality arctic armor has 7 movement speed. Uh, smoke mine gives movement speed, so you drop it, gives you a little buff to movement speed, and that's buffed by uh, Inner Force as well. And the Death Rush, which gives something called Onslaught, which is 20 it's just like the Onslaught lead, you get 20% uh, bonus to attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed, but only for two seconds. Pretty short time, but uh, Inner Force also buffs that. Um, as for gear, uh, it's important to get a well, I felt the need to make this a low-life build because there's a lot of low-life buffs to movement speed. And at, and obviously, you want to really use a Chavron's Wrappings to do a low-life build correctly. So I used a Chavron's Wrappings skinned onto a Bronze Lithe for uh, more movement speed. And uh, you could do this build without a Chavron's, but I don't think it would be quite as effective or be as endgame viable. Um... That's the rest of the gear. A Devoted's Devotion for 20% movement speed. A Career Reward for 10% movement speed. Lori's Lantern for a little bit of movement speed and low life. And the Dark Ray Vectors with 8 Frenzy Charges. They actually give the most movement speed of any pair of boots. At 40%. Chevron's Pace, I think, is the next one at 35%. And uh, finally, a perfect pair of Ondar's Clasp. With 15% movement speed on low life. And, uh... For flasks, a 30% Adrenaline Ample Quicksilver Flask for top rolls. Um, as of the belt, you know, a long time ago, uh, this character used to be the All Keystone Man. He grabbed every Keystone, and he was respect into this. And before he was using a Parandas Blazon for 20% increased flask effect duration. But then I found this, this jewel, this diamond in the rough with 18% flask effect duration, but also 18% reduced flask charges used, which uh, really buffs up the Quicksilver flasks, so we can get lots and lots of uses out of them. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about the build and gear. Uh, yeah, I guess let's, let's see how this guy works. Starts off kinda a little bit slow. Some frenzy charges. We're at 8. Drop a mine. So we're at 247% movement speed. 317% movement speed. 
Okay. And the last little piece is that guy. Four hundred and seven, I think, was the four oh seven percent movement speed. That is, I think, the fastest you can move in this game. There is nothing faster. Like the bright beaks of builds. So, some people might complain about the map viability of a, of a build built around an effective 400 hit points. But, uh, I'm here to kind of dispel that myth. So I'm going to run a map real quick. Just to prove that this, this is a map viable build. Um, as you can see, it's really quick to get around towns. So you don't waste a lot of time there. Let's head to the lab. So I have a Vol Pyramid map here. And uh, I'm just going to slot that guy in. There should be some mobs in here. And like the fastest gun in the west, I've already cleared it, actually. Remain. Ing. Oh, sh map viable. I have no idea why people would complain. So... In case you were wondering, perfectly good at clearing maps. Um, yeah, Vault, Vault Vizier. This is a Vault Pyramid. So, really works well for doing that. Don't even, yeah. It's like they don't even matter. Um, I guess I actually could show you a docks run while I'm here. Uh, just to so, show you how fast this build can be at clearing the docks. You know, and you just run around. I think I think Path of Exile really is more of a game about exploration. Um, so, you know, if you really want to have a build built around exploration and really get around places quickly, I think I think there is nothing better than this. Now, obviously, I might get hit from time to time, but rarely more than once or twice in a row. So, you can just run past guys. Well, that ended poorly. Anyways, that's the movement speed build. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time.